Let's take a look at a really tricky trig proof. So it says if tan x plus y is equal to 2 tan x minus y, show that sine of 2x over sine of 2y equals 3. Now, with this kind of proof question, what should you be thinking about at the beginning? This is clearly the addition rules. And somehow, we're going to be using the double angle rules. Okay. Well, I guess the first thing we should be doing then is just doing the addition rules. Yeah. So tan of x plus y, we're going to get tan of x plus tan of y. What? Divided by 1 minus, multiply them together, tan x times tan y is. Now 2, remember when you multiply, obviously this is a fraction, right? The 2 is going to multiply with the numerator. It's 2 over 1, okay? And when you multiply with the numerator, it's going to multiply both of these terms, all right? So we're going to get 2 tan x. Remember, on the numerator, it keeps the sign, minus 2 tan y divided by 1 plus tan x tan y, okay? All right, what are we going to do next? Well, I guess our only option is to just maybe get rid of the fractions, get everything onto one line. I mean, we're going to have to turn everything in terms of sine. We're probably going to have to turn everything in terms of, well, we will have to turn everything in terms of sine and cos. Whether we do it now or later, it doesn't really matter. My first instinct, I think, is just get rid of the denominators here first, and then we'll do the conversion. Okay, so let's cross multiply. We're going to have tan x plus tan y times 1 plus uh, tan x tan y. Yes, that's these two multiplied together. Equals uh, this which to an extent you might say, ah, maybe keeping the two outside would have been nicer, but you're gonna have to multiply the two in any way, so it doesn't really make a difference more. Although, if you guys would have converted to sine and cos straight away, let me know. It's always cool to see uh, different methods, isn't it? So we got tans by this, one minus tan x tan y. Okay, always double check your working, just make sure everything's cushy, isn't it? All right, so let's uh, expand this. So we're going to get tan x times 1 is just tan x. Then we have tan x times this. That's going to give me tan squared tan y. So tan squared x tan y. Here we get tan y. And tan x tan squared y. Okay. Here we're going to get... 2 tan x here minus uh, 2 tan squared x tan y. Taking up the whole board, mate. So minus 2 tan y plus uh, 2 tan x tan squared y. Okay, now that's cool because I noticed that we have like terms. Now how we rearrange it, I just want to try and keep as many things positive as possible. So this tan x, I'm going to bring over to here. So tan x over here would become tan x. Then this minus tan y, I'm actually going to bring over to this side to make this 3 tan y. Now, this is done. This... Where's the other one? So tan squared there. Probably want to bring that here then. Let's keep it positive. So we get uh, 3 tan squared x tan y plus. And then this, I guess then, we'll move it over there. We just get tan squared x, sorry, tan x tan squared y. Yes. All right, so, I mean, here, I'm looking at the answer. They do have three. I feel like what's going to happen here is I'm, I'm essentially rearranging for three. Factorize out the three, divide by this, and then 
change it to sine and cos? I mean, you could do it now. I actually think because we're rearranging for three, it's a good idea to do it now. So, how would that look? Without having to rewrite a whole line, so I'm gonna write three, and then just put this in a bracket. So we're gonna have three, it's not gonna look the nicest. We have three, lots of this. So, I'm gonna write the three bit second, but we're doing this divided by this, okay? so. Did I say I wanted to write a second? Doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna do it like this. At the same time, let's start changing it. Ooh, we could factorize tan x. Ooh, and then you'll get one plus tan squared. Ooh, that's an identity. Okay, discovering some new things, Mike. So, no, well, not really, but, oh, we could do that here. Factorize out tan. Remember, we're dividing by this bracket, right? we would get tan squared plus one. Now, had you guys up here changed the sine and cos, you would, have get, you would have gotten other identities, probably the sine squared plus cos squared is one. If you did do it that way, let me know, innit? And then, factorizing out tan x here, we get one plus tan squared. Okay, that is an identity in itself, and I can prove it to you very quickly, we know sine squared plus cos squared is one. If I divide through by cos squared, sine over cos is tan squared plus one is sec squared. Cool, cool. So we got three is tan. Now here I'm gonna start converting everything. Yeah, so tan is sine x over cos x times 1 plus tan squared y is sec squared y. Sec squared y is 1 over cos squared y. Yeah, that was here, 1 over cos squared. Divided by tan squared y, sine of y over cos of y, times, remember that's going to be sec squared x, which is 1 over cos squared x. Okay, now we need to clean all of this up. How do we do that? This I call scaling, when you have fractions within fractions. So what I do is I say you protect, so P-R-O-T-E-C-C. -E so we protect the numerator and the denominator. And you just say, okay, what do I need to multiply the top and bottom by to get rid of these fractions within fractions? Well, for example, here, we're gonna to have to times top and bottom by cos x, right? Yeah, to get rid of that. But then I notice that that won't cancel out the cos squared. So I need to times through by cos squared because cos squared will also cancel out the cos. And by that same argument, I'm gonna times top and bottom by cos squared because we wanna get rid of this, but we also need to get rid of that. All right, so the cos squared going to cancel with that. This cos is only going to cancel with that once. Okay, so what have we got? Let's uh, move over here. We have 3 is sine times cos. Sine x, cos x. Uh, sine x, yeah, cos x. Divided by here, cos squared x cancels, and this cos y is gonna cancel with that once. So we're left with sine y, cos y. Bruh. <laughs> anyway, now, look at the answer. Sine two x, sine two y. You should notice this as being our double angle IDs, which we proved in the last video the only thing is, is that there's no coefficient here, right? All right. Sine of 2x is 2 sine x cos x, right? But they just have, or we have, sine x cos x. We just need to half both sides. So we divide by 2. We'd have a half here. So both of these are a half, and then you have the double angle ID, so sine. 2x divided by a half, 
sine 2y, then the halves cancel, and we're left with 3 equals sine 2x, which is the one that's in the numerator, divided by sine 2y. And that has been shown. If you, would have done, if you would have done it in a different way, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I always love seeing how you guys solve the same problems. And make sure you're subscribed and like the video for more content like this. If you have any suggestions, head over to my Instagram and send me uh, images of questions that you might want me to complete. And if you're interested in my full A-level courses, then head to the link in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.